Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video where we finally have the full specifications of Sony's PlayStation 5. And I have to be honest with you, the specifications were shocking. Now, a lot of people were expecting the console to be 13 teraflops of performance, 12 teraflops of performance, even 11 teraflops of performance. Now, for the longest time, I've maintained that the PlayStation 5 would be 9 teraflops to 10 teraflops of performance if they were able to clock their speeds of their GPU a little bit higher and perhaps unlock some CU. Fortunately for Sony, they were able to clock their GPU a little bit higher to 2.23 gigahertz, but this is not a sustained speed. This is rather a boost clock, giving the PlayStation 5 a max 10.28 teraflops of performance. But to be honest with you, you're not going to see that in the majority of games. Most games, you're going to get about 9.2 teraflops of performance out of the PlayStation 5. Now, I don't know why they went this way with their boost clocks. I think they're risking another episode of the PlayStation 4 Pro where it's very loud and they even acknowledge that the PlayStation 4 Pro didn't have the best cooling. Now with the system boosting up to 2.23 gigahertz, I don't think that's going to be sustainable for long periods of time. I think the majority of games are going to be 9.2 teraflops. I think some of the old school games like the original PlayStation 4 games might be able to run at that speed some of the time, but for the majority of games it's going to be 9.2 teraflops of performance which is a lot lower than the Xbox Series X 12 teraflops of performance. Now the Xbox Series X 12 teraflops is constant. There are no boost clocks in that console. Now the CPU that's inside the PlayStation 5 is a Zen 2 8 core 16 thread with 3.5 gigahertz. Now it also has a boost clock. So the speeds of the CPU will boost up and down. I believe it's from 2.4 to 3.5. So right there alone, their CPU is weaker than the Xbox Series X as well. Now they also mentioned custom custom RDNA 2 architecture. Now they said it will have some elements of RDNA 2. Now I see some people in my comment section on Twitter saying that it's RDNA 1.5 and I'm not quite sure that it's RDNA 1.5 because they are able to clock it at 2.23 gigahertz. That is a really high clock and the original form of RDNA, like the first generation of RDNA cards, they're not capable of anywhere near those type of speeds. So I do think that the majority of the architecture that's on the PlayStation 5 GPU is RDNA 2. Now the ray tracing, they didn't really talk a lot about the ray tracing. They did mention that the CUs will be handling some of the ray tracing. They're going to do some type of hybrid approach. Now I'm going to hold off on my opinion on the ray tracing until I get more information on that. Nonetheless, it is kind of troubling that the PlayStation 5 is not looking up to par as the Xbox Series X in a lot of areas. Now the one area that they do beat the Xbox Series X is the SSD. Now the SSD reportedly is like 40 times faster or overall two times faster than the Xbox Series X SSD and that's okay but in reality that's going to lead to maybe three seconds less loading times. Now the Xbox Series X from what we've seen so far the games load like in four to five seconds. On the PlayStation 5 I think the games will load to one to two seconds so it's not really a big difference there and apparently they invested a lot in the SSD technology and because their SSD drive is a lot more faster than the Xbox Series X I believe that raises the price for the console. Now the SSD the load times uh, honestly tell you two to three seconds difference I don't think the average gamer is really going to notice that and I think that was a wasted investment on the PlayStation 5. They should have invested more on the CU count. They should have got a better GPU and worried about getting their clocks higher for the CPU. Nonetheless, this is the case with the PlayStation 5. Now, it will play UHD discs for games. It will support off-the-shelf SSD upgrades, so you will be able to open up the PlayStation 5 and slot in an off-the-shelf SSD drive. They say they're not available at this moment, but they are coming in the future. Now, this is a good point because the Xbox Series X at the back, it is a proprietary SSD drive, and currently, only Seagate is making that for Microsoft. Now there's going to be over a hundred top games that are backwards compatible on the PlayStation 5. So the PlayStation 5 doesn't even have backwards compatibility for all of the PlayStation 4 games, much less the PlayStation 3 games. I didn't hear anything mentioned about PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility. Now 835 gigabytes is the SSD size, once again smaller than the Xbox Series X, which is one terabyte of storage. Now I, honest to tell you, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. I wanted to hear something about their hardware ray tracing. I perhaps wanted to hear something about variable rate shading. Variable rate shading wasn't mentioned at all. 10.3 teraflops is a best case scenario. That's when the clocks are boosting and the system is cool and it's not overheating. That will not be sustainable for most games. I would expect the PlayStation 5 to run games at 9.2 teraflops, which is exactly what the GitHub leak said. Now the GitHub leak had the specs for the PlayStation 5, it had the specs for the Xbox Series 
Series X, and the Xbox Series X was correct, yet people were still doubting that the PlayStation 5 would have 36 CUs. Now, I tried to tell everybody to temper their expectations that it wasn't going to be 13, 14, or 18 teraflops like some extremists were saying, that it would be 9.2 teraflops. And at the end of the day, I was correct on this. I did think that the PlayStation 5 would have a faster solid state drive solution, and they do. Now, with all that said, I still think that the PlayStation 5 will be a capable machine. Yes, it'll be less capable than the Xbox Series X, but games will still look fantastic on the PlayStation 5, and I'm actually looking forward to hearing more about the games that will be running on Sony's next generation system. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about today's news. Are you disappointed on the PlayStation 5 specs? Are you going to get an Xbox Series X now that you know it's more powerful than Sony's next generation system? Please let me know in the comment section down below, and like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.